stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am continuing with the, my reviews of the player cards in Black Stars Rise, the fifth Mythos pack in the Path to Carcosa cycle. I am uh, looking at the Mystic cards this time around. There are uh, spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. There are uh, three Mystic cards in this pack, one of which uh, breaks some new ground, so, uh, so let's uh, get started. The first Mystic card in the pack is uh, St. Hubert's Key, Cleansing Fire. It's a four-cost asset with a willpower skill icon and the item and charm traits. It has the game text... It you get plus one willpower, plus one intellect, and minus two sanity. Response, when you would be defeated by horror, discard St. Hubert's Key. Immediately heal to horror. St. Hu Hubert's Key will also take up the accessory slot. Wow, now that is a uh, cool card. Man, where do I start? Now, I did see some people on the forums who were poo-pooing this card when it was first released, but... Uh, I uh, I think this card is fantastic. I uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, intellect is uh, one of the most important skills in the game, and that uh, that cards pr that provide a passive boost to intellect see a lot of play because they tend to be quite strong. Investigators who want an extra intellect skill icon or or two have a few options to consider at the moment, including magnifying glass and Dr. Mylan Christopher in the seeker class, Dario Elamin uh, in the rogue class. Dark Horse in uh, the Survivor class, and Alyssa Graham, uh, a mystic ally released in uh, Undimensioned and Unseen. St. Hubert's Key offers investigators another pass passive intellect uh, boost, and uh, much like the other cards with this skill icon, I, th I expect it to see a lot of play, despite its two apparent drawbacks. First, uh, St. Hubert's Key competes with the Holy Rosary, and to a lesser extent the uh, Jewel of Aureolus, Gift of the Homunculi, for, an for the accessory slot. Uh, the Holy Rosary has been a staple in a lot of Mystic decks since the core set, while uh, the Jewel tends to crop up in a lot of uh, Jim Culver builds. Now, the key does cost twice as much as the Rosary, but I, uh, I think it's a better option for investigators who prioritize uh, willpower and intellect. And uh, I'd include uh, Jim Culver, Marie Lambeau, Daisy Walker, and uh, Norman Withers in, in that group. Who knows, uh, perhaps uh, Relic Hunter, that uh, neutral permanent from the Essex County Express that gives you a second accessory slot uh, for three experience points, will start to see more play now that uh, we're seeing more uh, accessories that are actually worth playing. The uh, second drawback of St. Hubert's Key is uh, that while it's in play, the investigator has minus two sanity. Again, uh, the key doesn't stack up well compared to the rosary, which actually grants you two extra sanity. However, uh, when you would be defeated by horror, you can discard the key to immediately heal two horror. So if, uh, if Akachi takes her sixth horror, for example, she can uh, trigger the key's response to discard it and immediately heal two horror. Suddenly she's gone from uh, 6 Sanity and 6 Horror to 8 Sanity and 4 Horror, which is a, a difference of 4, which is, uh, is pretty substantial. And uh, it's going to take quite a bit more uh, Horror to defeat her after that. The, uh, the key's primary drawback isn't necessarily uh, a drawback in certain investigators. I... I really didn't think much of uh, the Desperate Skill cards uh, when they were released in Echoes of the Past, but uh, a card like St. Hubert's Key makes them a lot more viable. Take uh, Ashcan Pete, for example. Ashcan has 5 willpower, 3 intellect, and 3 sanity while the key is in play. As, uh, as soon as the key hits the table, Ashcan can play the Desperate Skill cards. There is uh, already an Ashcan Pete uh, deck out there built by Dread Reaper that uh, plays 20 skill cards, including all of the desperate skills. And I uh, expect St. Hubert's Key is going to find a home, uh, uh, a home in that deck immediately. If uh, you're interested in playing around with the desperate skills, it may also be worth uh, playing the Key and Zoe or Jenny, who uh, have a sanity of 4 and 5 respectively. It's uh, only going to take one or two horror 
uh, to turn those desperate those uh, desperate skills on in those uh, those particular decks. Much like uh, Stick to the Plan, which uh, I looked at during my review of the Guardian cards, uh, St. Hubert's Key is one of those cards that's going to give players a wealth of deck building options to explore. It's a, it's a little pricey at four resources, but uh, Dr. Mylan Christopher and Alyssa Graham cost, uh, also cost four resources, and uh, I wouldn't balk at uh, playing either of those cards. I'm uh, also pretty happy to see that the uh, the desperate skills are uh, becoming a little bit more relevant with each passing release. The designers are uh, releasing cards that that support uh, those skills, and uh, sanity is slowly becoming a resource that uh, investigators can spend to produce uh, some powerful effects. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more of that, as well as to see whether they they do the same thing with health. They've, uh, they've done a little bit of that with Mark Harrigan, but uh, I think there's a lot more design space they could explore there. The uh, second Mystic card in the pack is an upgrade for Arcane Initiate, an uh, asset from the core set. This version of uh, the Arcane Initiate will set you back three experience points. It enters play for free, and it has uh, willpower and combat skill icons, the ally and sorcerer traits, and uh, it takes up an ally slot. It has the forced effect, after Arcane Initiate enters play, place one Doom or two Horror on it. You may trigger it for free and exhaust the Arcane Initiate to search the top three cards of your deck for a spell card and draw it. Shuffle your deck. The uh, level three Arcane Initiate has one health and three sanity. Now, I've been playing with the Arcane Initiate since the, uh, the core set, and for the life of me, I, I still can't figure out exactly what she's doing in the art. It uh, looks like she's involved in some sort of ritual, but uh, judging by the amount of blood on the walls, her clothes, and the uh, the ornate vessel at her feet, uh, she hasn't exactly mastered the ritual's intricacies. But uh, I guess what would you expect? She is only an initiate, after all. The uh, level 3 arcane initiate isn't uh, really a radical departure from its uh, corset counterpart. It's a resource cheaper, and it uh, boasts an extra combat skill icon and one more sanity. The uh, ability to search the top three cards of your deck for a spell is identical. The uh, key difference is the forced effect, which gives you the option of placing one doom or two horror on the arcane initiate after it enters play. Now, I guess it's nice to have the option of adding two horror rather than a doom, Honestly, uh, as much as I dislike playing with fire by placing more Doom in play, I think I would still add the Doom, because uh, the Doom will eventually go away when the agenda advances. It's uh, much more difficult to heal the horror on an ally unless you've got access to cards in the Guardian class, and uh, gaining that extra point of sanity is one of the most appealing things about this card. That uh, one extra sanity means one less horror on your investigator, which is great, uh, especially in the Path to Carcosa meta where there's, uh, there's plenty of horror flying around. I, I'm not really convinced that the, the various tweaks to the Arcane Initiate are worth the uh, three experience points, though. Mystics have uh, quite a few expensive upgrades, including Shriveling, Blinding Light, and uh, Rite of Seeking and Ward of Protection, uh, that I would probably prioritize over this card. If I'm spending three experience points on a card, it really needs to make a significant impact on the board state, and uh, I don't think Arcane Initiate really does that. That said, uh, FFG has already spoiled a card from the uh, upcoming Forgotten Age cycle that I think is going to radically change the way Mystics spend their experience points. Arcane Research is going to make it uh, cheaper for Mystics to, to upgrade their spells, which uh, could free up experience for cards like the uh, the level 3 Arcane Initiate. The uh, level 3 Arcane Initiate doesn't really blow me away. I think uh, most players treat the level 0 version as uh, the most disposable of allies. You play her, you trigger her effect, and then you try to kill her off as quickly as possible to remove that doom from play. The, uh, the designers have made a few cosmetic changes to entice investigators to keep her around, but uh, her primary ability is exactly the same, which is it's a little disappointing considering she costs three experience points. Now, I have uh, no insight into the design process, but I feel as though the designers could have pushed her a little bit more uh, at that price point, perhaps allowing her to dig a little bit deeper into your deck for a spell. 
As it sounds, I don't think the changes are significant enough to warrant an immediate upgrade. Now, we could be we could see a level 5 version of uh, Arcane Initiate down the road that will uh, let you search your entire deck for a spell, in uh, in which case the level 3 version would be a convenient way to upgrade to uh, upgrade the card in increments rather than uh, one fell swoop. I know I've found that uh, the level, I believe it's the level 3 version of Shriveling is a nice uh, a nice stopping point if you uh, can, if you don't have all the experience to upgrade right to the level 5 version. So I could certainly see the the level 3 version of Arcane Initiate being a nice stopping point uh, as you, if you're upgrading her to a, to a higher level. The uh, final Mystic card in the pack is the level 2 Ward of Protection another upgrade for the event from the core set. This version will set you back two experience points and has and uh, one resource. It has a wild skill icon and the spell and spirit traits. It has the game text fast. Play when an investigator at any location draws a non-weakness treachery card. Cancel that card's revelation effect. Then take one horror. This is the uh, third version of Ward of Protection that we've seen in the game. Level 5 Ward of Protection, uh, which was released in Lost in Time and Space, lets you cancel any encounter card outright. It's uh, undeniably powerful, but it's a, a luxury that I've really never had the experience points to afford. I'm probably going to keep this brief, because the, uh, the level 0 Ward of Protection is almost an auto-include in every deck with access to the Mystic card pool. The, uh, the ability to cancel the revelation effect of a treachery is incredible, and uh, it saved my ass in, uh, in countless games. The, uh, the only deck I don't put it in immediately is Norman Withers, and uh, that has everything to do with Norman's wonky deck building restrictions, and uh, not the power of Word of Protection. Word of Protection is, is among the first cards that I include in, the, in my Norman deck once I've uh, freed up some space by upgrading my, my other level 0 Mystic cards. Level 2 uh, Word of Protection is identical to its level 0 counterpart with the exception that you can cancel the revelation effect on a treachery drawn by any investigator anywhere on the board. Obviously this is the uh, Word of Protection that you want in your deck if you're playing multiplayer and there's a particularly nasty treachery in the encounter deck. If you're playing multiplayer the, uh, the odds are extremely high that you're going to see that treachery at some point during the scenario and uh, depending on the player count the odds are also high that somebody other than you uh, will draw it and uh, level 2 ward of protection will deal with that threat uh, before it can wreck your game level 2 uh, ward of protection costs 2 experience points which is slightly more than either forewarned or a test of will the other two cards that we uh, we've seen in this cycle that cancel treacheries Level 2 Ward of Protection is the most flexible of the bunch, though, so uh, the higher cost is probably justified. I don't, uh, you know, Mystics uh, shouldn't have too much trouble paying for it if they delve too deep. And uh, as I mentioned, we do have uh, Arcane Research coming up in the next cycle that will enable you to uh, upgrade your Ward of Protection a little bit uh, easier. It's not going to help you... Uh, you might get it. I think you get a, a one experience point discount if you're upgrading from level zero to level two, and then you would get you could get another if you were uh, upgrading from level two to zero to level five. But uh, I upgrading all the way to level five isn't isn't going to be necessary in uh, in most circumstances. I uh, don't really have much else to say about this card, uh, unfortunately. If you're uh, playing multiplayer and you're worried about getting hosed by a treachery, uh, you're gladly going to pay the two experience points uh, for this card without hesitation. The ability to, uh, to cancel any treachery card or drawn by uh, any other player is, uh, is fantastic and uh, definitely an asset if you're playing in multiplayer and you're seeing a lot more cards uh, off the encounter deck. That is going to do it for my look at the Mystic cards in Black Star's Rise. St. Hubert's Key is, is one of those cards that's just going to open up a lot of new possibilities for in investigators. I've uh, already seen a couple of Jim Culver, uh, Ash Canpeat, and Daisy Walker decks that have uh, been experimenting with it 
and I expect there's going to be a lot more uh, decks to come. I've uh, I've taken a look at the card uh, for my uh, Safino Rousseau deck as well, and I'm I'm interested in uh, in testing it there. Level three Arcane Initiate isn't uh, doesn't really uh, blow me away, but uh, just because I think Mystics probably have higher priorities. Uh, but you know that could change following the release of Arcane uh, Research and Threads of Fate. And uh, if you're playing multiplayer, I think you're probably just going to grab that Ward of Protection, uh, that level two Ward of Protection, because it's uh, it's really going to save you if you're playing multiplayer. But uh, do make sure you play the cards yourself. These uh, this is of course just uh, one man from Lang's opinion and. Uh, I've uh, certainly been wrong in the past about cards, and I wholly expect to be wrong in the future sometimes. So, uh, let me know how you've, uh, how you, what your experience has been like with these cards uh, in the comments. That's going to do it for me today. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail dot com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.